don't you think? Looks just like him. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 134 of the Love and Stitches podcast. It has been two weeks since the last podcast and I'm really excited to be back. It's so strange when you do something weekly to be out of that routine. So I'm excited to show you a project that I finished, a few that I have cast on, and I actually have several acquisitions in this episode, I know. I'm trying not to add to stash, I'm trying to eliminate stash, and yet I have some acquisitions at <laughs> this time. Um, it is a beautiful sunny day here in New York City. It's actually getting quite warm. I'm wearing a long sleeve t-shirt and I'm kind of regretting it because I've turned off the air, I've shut the window. It's one of those days where it's beautiful and sunny and having the window open with no air on is like perfect, especially when you're sitting right by the window and you get a breeze. So I think spring is coming. Actually, yesterday was officially the first day of spring, I believe. So yay, <laughs> I'm happy about that. I am wearing a knitting t-shirt today that I just received after, well, okay, so there's a story to it, but this is a from a retired um, collection called the Definition Collection that I had on my spread shop. I have just logo merch on there now. It's always linked down below if you want to get a similar t-shirt or sweatshirt or something like that. I just have the, the logo on, on there right now. But I did this collection in December of last year and I ordered a, t -sh a short sleeve t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and this long sleeve t-shirt and they all came together in a package and for some reason this one was completely blank like it didn't get screen printed at all which was just an obvious mistake so i contacted them like they would answer me right away they sent a new one right away but i forgot that i had my original package shipped to my parents in tennessee and i didn't update my address when i reordered and so this shirt has been sitting in Tennessee at my parents' house for about three months. And since I just went to visit them, I was able to pick it up because I just told them, you know, it's not worth, you know, shipping it for the cost and, you know, another box bag and the environment. Like I will just get it the next time that I'm there. So I'm probably gonna wear this a few times since it's new to my collection. <laughs> All right, let's get started with some projects. <laughs> So I have a finished object this week, something that I started and finished since the last time that I podcast. And it is a playtime cowl, but I wanna show the yarn first because this yarn was getting lots of attention on Instagram because it's so pretty. Um, here's the yarn actually, I'm gonna show it in the ball. So much fun, these colors look so amazing. I love this, I had not knit with, um, Hot knit, hot, hot knit. Do you say hot or hot? I'm not sure. And the color is tight roll jeans. So super pretty. And I made, I haven't blocked this yet and it's been sitting in a bag, <laughs> but I made a single loop playtime cowl. This is a crochet cowl, one of my own designs that actually just came out last week. It is a nice, just, lightweight, quick cowl with some really fun stitches in it. So this is the single loop version. You can see that it's kind of made to scrunch up and just be rather decorative. It's probably not gonna be the warmest cowl that you've ever made, but it's great for all climates. And of course, if you are um, getting warmer weather right now, perfect to dress up like a t-shirt or a cute dress or something. And then I had I haven't weighed this yet, but it almost looks like 50 grams. I don't think that I used, I think that I used maybe 60. I need to weigh this, but I had quite a bit of a ball left over. So I need to clean this up, figure out what to do with it. I haven't even um, blocked this yet, but to be honest, it looks pretty good. Like crochet sometimes I think it just looks a little better before you block it. Knitting is so uneven, but this, I would just start wearing this. And I'm usually like a hard and fast, I always block things. I do need to wash it because I worked on it mostly on the plane ride to um, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I should definitely wash that. But I started this and finished this since I last 
um, podcast. So I was like, yay, got a whole project done and they're, they're super, super fast. But just for comparison, there's a, um, a double loop version that you wear doubled. It's a little bit skinnier and it uses more of the ball of yarn. So single loop and double loop. But I'll probably talk about this more in the news section because I did just release this pattern and I'm I'm so excited about it. I have a bunch of playtime cowls in here, but there you go. Playtime cowl, one of my own patterns and I'll have it linked down below in the project section. Okay, yarn labels, what do we do with them? <laughs> when we're done, toss it. This is why I keep my information on Ravelry because I do not need that yarn label anymore. Okay, I have also been working on my whip. So I will share a few of things that I had already started, I think. And then I have two new cast-ons. A lot has happened in these last two weeks <laughs> and I'm excited to share. Okay, so I am still working on, oh gosh, what did I just do? I just got some yarn, like, there we go. Caught up in a stitch marker. Okay. I am still working on my prismatic sweater. I'm gonna try to get it so it looks real nice when I hold it up here. Okay. Oh, I look so, oh, I know. So last time I showed this, I like spent a lot of time admiring it in the view frame of the camera because there's just something about like, when you hold it out and look at it, it doesn't quite look the same as when you hold it up on camera and look at it because it's almost like getting another person's view on it. And it is so beautiful. So this is the Prismatic Sweater by Wool and Pine Designs. So all the credit to them for making such a beautiful sweater. Let me show the yarn really quickly because I believe I have, oh wait, no, this is one where I don't have all the labels. I have one label but I don't have all of them because I'm using a lot of stash yarn that was used and then ripped out. And so like labels have gone away and who even knows where they are. So I do have all of the yarns linked in the project page down below, but I know that this one, my main color is Suburban Stitcher and the color is in is in the thing down below. And then I know that this one is Miss Babs Katahdin. And again, the color is in the project page below. I wound off from a larger skein for this. So I actually have like 1400 yards of this yarn left. It's just still skeined up. I only wound off a little bit of it to use for the sweater. And then this worked out great. I am done using this color unless I just had a thought. It would be kind of fun to add this in maybe to like the sleeves or the bottom of this sweater. I'm gonna keep, you know, let me know what you think about that because I love this color so much. I've used it, I think I've used it in two projects. I know for sure that I used it in my shellography, which was the Stephen West Mystery Shawl Knit Along this past year. And I had about 60 grams, I believe, left over. And so I did the math on my size to see if I would have enough for the color work, and I did. And I actually had even more than enough. Um, so I'm glad that the pattern maybe overestimated a little bit how much yardage you would need. Perfect, because <laughs> I don't like to be risking it too much. But I had plenty of this left over, and this color is Hooker's Corner. And let's see, Hooker's Corner, check yourself. It was a breast cancer awareness colorway. And I just love it so much that like, I still wanna use, I wanna use most of it. I mean, I guess I could just put it into my scrappy granny stripe, but do you think it would be fun to add it into the bottom of the sweater, like before the ribbing? I don't know, that could be really fun, right? Cause I'm, I believe the pattern is just from here out, it's just main color all the way down. But I could do like a skinny stripe of each of these colors on, the bottom and the sleeves or just the sleeves or <sighs> try to add this in the sleeves. I know that sounds like a lot. I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. Let me know what you think. What would you do if it was your sweater and you love this color so much, you wanna use more of it. Um, but that all has worked out great. I have plenty of this left. And what I'm doing now, so I've just um, 
I've split for the sleeves. And as always, I want to share my sleeve stitch holders. I love these things. You can see it's like a little tiny needle, right? And these little stoppers, it like all goes together. These are the Clover Short Circular Stitch Holders. And I have them in my Amazon storefront and I will link them down below because they are just the best. I have just two of them because most of the time I only have one sweater <laughs> going on and I have one on each sleeve and I love them because they're flexible and easy to get stitches onto the stitch holder and then back off again onto a regular needle when you're ready to knit them again. And I just think they're really, really great. I also like them because when I go to try the sweater on, I can just uh, separate them and then make sure to slide the stopper all the way down to the end and then slide your sleeve stitches all the way to the end. That way, when you try on your sleeve, it has plenty of space to like spread out without getting um, close to the needle tip. So I love it because you can try on really easily and then just put everything, scooch everything back up together. So I think these are great. I'll link them down below. You can get them, um, if you can get them from your local yarn store, get them there, but they do have them on Amazon. They're just not, I don't think they, you can get them via Prime. Anyway, I think they're really great. So I split for the sleeves. I've done not quite an inch yet. Once I get to like an inch, inch and a half, I'm gonna try the whole thing on the yoke and everything and just make sure that it's fitting before proceeding because if it's not fitting, it'll be really sad, but I need to do something now rather than finish the sweater. <laughs> um, but since I'm working with just the solid uh, main color again, I am alternating my skeins. So these have been used before and then I wound them back up. I tried to make another sweater and it just didn't work out. And so I've had these for a while. I cannot wait to get them out of stash. So I am alternating my uh, two of these skeins. They do look really similar, but whenever you have a hand dyed yarn, I felt like one was looking darker, but I think it's just the light. Whenever you have a hand dyed yarn, it's always suggested that you alternate skeins when using more than one because hand dyed means it's not always uniform throughout. And so mixing up two balls of yarn will help to try to just kind of distribute color and make things look much more even. And so the way that I am um, alternating my skeins is, is with helical knitting, um, which is just, let me see if I can find, oh, they're not next to each other, but instead of um, carrying my yarn up at the beginning of the round and twisting it, it can kind of, that can kind of create a line and a jog. Helical knitting is another method that you can use and it is so smooth. So you can see I've got, I know I'm looking at the pearl side, but I've got one attached here and then I'm working with this with this skein. So I'll work, work, work across. And when I get to three stitches before this last one, I will drop the other, the color that I'm working with or the yarn that I'm working with, slip three stitches and then pick this one up and start working with it. It doesn't make sense until you do it, <laughs> but I do have a tutorial on how to do helical knitting. So if I can remember, I will link it. If not, you can just like Google Nitty Natty helical knitting and it should pop up. Um, but I love this method and I will never do the twisted at the beginning of round again if I can avoid it um, because this works out so, so well. So yeah, I'm really excited to continue working on this. I did quite a lot since the last time I podcast. I was right here, cute little marker, finished the whole yoke, got things split and man, that yoke was getting I mean, there was a lot of stitches on there. <laughs> it was taking me a long time, but I was almost just a little bit sad when the color work ended because now the rest of the sweater is so simple, which is great, but also not as exciting. <laughs> um, I did also order a, I'm using um, size two and a half, US two and a half, which is how many millimeters? Three millimeters. Um, for the stockinette portion. So I did change change sizes. I had I use a three Yeah, a three and then a two and a half and I know that I needed that because I swatched on it And so I only had size two and a half 
uh, 32 inch circular needles because I think I'd use them for socks once. I actually think I got them by mistake, but I decided it was worth ordering a $13, $11 needle so that I could be comfortable for the body of this sweater. And I got that from the Crazy Sock Lady shop. The shipping was really, really fast. So I um, that was my first time ordering a needle from there and I've heard really good things and I can now confirm them. So loving that sweater. Okay, talked about that one for so long that my computer locked up. <laughs> okay, let's look at another whip. This one I did not do all that much with, but these are my kind of Disney uh, land socks. And I don't even know if these markers are in the right place, but I had one, my little Mickey marker. The yarn and the markers are from Fangirl Fibers. Man, it's so hard to show. Little Mickey marker. So it's possible that I've done that much since last time, but I just have this feeling that I didn't. <laughs> that I just didn't move the stitch marker maybe. So we're gonna move that down. This sock only needs a toe. So I'm right where I need to be to start the toe. So that's all that one needs. And then this one I did start, I know at the last podcast, and I haven't worked on it much because I actually have another project that I have been working on more. And I'm just working through the leg on this one. So these are so fun because look how different they look. Isn't that great? So this was one skein of yarn that I split into 50 gram cakes. You can tell because this one has less in it. This is the first sock that I've knit more on. So I've split it into 50 gram cakes. And this yarn is Fangirl Fibers. And it was from her advent, her Disney advent from 2021. And so even within one skein of hand dyed yarn, you can get a lot of difference in color. So imagine if I was knitting like the prismatic sweater with two skeins of this yarn and I didn't alternate them. This is why we alternate yarns. On socks though, I think this is kind of fun. Like I really do like, genuinely like both ways it's knitting up and I think it's kind of cool that they're slightly different. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. I think it's really, really fun. And this is just a nice little sock project to have on the side. I am using my perfect fit sock formula for these and the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is by Patty Joy White. So all my, my project um, details are also in the project page that I will link below. And I still have this in my Malia Made It Disney Princess bag from when I actually went to Disney World. <laughs> so I uh, haven't changed the project bag yet, but I don't think I'm going to. Okay, here's another project I believe I had just started but I'm not sure. Did, had I started this on the last one? I think maybe I had. And this is my everyday slouchy beanie. This is a pattern by Tristan Molina, who is Dragon Horde Designs and Dragon Horde Yarn. And the yarn that I'm using, I'm actually using two yarns held together. Both are from So Happy Jane. And both are called Rosy Glow. Although I'm pretty sure I messed that up again and said like rosy gold or something, but um, it's two different bases, the tweed fingering and the magic mohair held together. And it's looking really good. I saw this yarn at Indian Tangled in October and just really liked the color. Like I think it's just very me. <laughs> and I thought it would make a great hat. I've made this hat once before for one of my brothers and I want one for myself because I wear a hat a lot. I usually wear my muscle bro hat almost every single day. And then I knit like another cable hat this year. And then a friend knit me a hat and I just like alternate through all of my hats. So I figured now that I'm in New York, it's not a bad idea to have more hats. So I am working through this one. This part is a folded brim. So you actually knit this like twice as long and then fold up the cast on edge and knit together so that this is this part here. Oh my gosh, Natalie, I'm trying to like see and show. <laughs> this part here is double thick, which is really, really nice. But that part takes so long <laughs> in comparison to this part where I've gone up a needle size 
and this part has gone really, really fast. So I've done a lot since the last time. I think I was down here, um, my cute little marker. And I really want to finish this up this week. I have too many projects on the needles and I need to get something off and just like completed and done so that it's, you know, not rumbling around in my mind here. Um, but I have a few things to share about this hat. So I made a couple modifications. The first is that I um, changed the way I did the folded brim in a couple ways. So I just, hey, Coaster. Coaster's just decided to come in. Hi, buddy. <laughs> um, I did not do a provisional cast on. Instead, I cast on with long tail. And when I folded up the brim, I picked up the long tail cast on. And several of you expressed that you were interested in how I did that. And so I recorded a tutorial while I did it. And that tutorial was Tuesday's video. So I'll make sure to link that down below. But you can do this anytime you have a folded brim. Sometimes there's a folded hem on different things. I've seen people do folded hems on socks and sweaters and sleeves. So it's a great, um, great way to have like a really nice, clean, finished edge. The other thing that I did is I eliminated a pearl round here and just kept a plain um, knitted edge. And I think it looks, you know, just as nice. Um, but other than that, I just carried on with the pattern. I think that when I made it once before, I made the stockinette portion of the body a little bit longer. Um, and then this is a very tight fitting hat. So as I'm putting it on, it is like tight. But the reason is, is that it's stockinette and it's going to stretch. And so it's pretty tight, pretty tight here. But it will stretch out, I'll also block it. Um, but I am really excited to see how that turns out. And I am making the medium. I don't know if I got gauge though. I should definitely see because I might have been knitting a little smaller. But anyway, Everyday Slotchy Beanie, Tristan Molina. Oh, and I am knitting on Magic Loop with 40 inch circular needles. I was switching over to my 16 inches, but it just wasn't comfortable for me. I don't like having the short needle tips. It's just like, it activates different muscles in my forearms and tendons and stuff, and it hurts. So I decided to do, uh, I had 40 inch, in these size three needles. So I switched over to that and it's way more comfortable. So you can always, you know, adjust the way you're knitting in the round to make it comfortable for you. We're not done yet. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the new projects that I've cast on since the last podcast. I've got two new projects. And the first is this shawl that is a completely new technique for me. So I am both excited and scared to show you. <laughs> so last week was, was it last week? I guess two weeks ago um, was my birthday and I wanted to have a birthday cast on. So I decided to cast on something totally new and spend I think like a good hour learning this new to me technique and that is Tunisian crochet. So I have a baby shawl here. <laughs> And I'm not even 100% certain I have done it right. It's supposed to be holy. So that part I got. But this is the beginning of the Party Punch Shawl by Tony Lipsy, who's TL Yarn Crafts. And I did this a couple Wednesdays ago on my birthday, and I haven't touched it since. And I hope to goodness I remember what to do, <laughs> but she does have a video tutorial, so I'll be able to go back. I'm actually pulling out so many stitches right now, so I'm gonna have to rip this a few things out and fix it. But I'm gonna show this Tunisian crochet hook set in more detail in just a minute because I have a ton of acquisitions. We're just gonna do an acquisition section of the um, podcast today because I have so many different things. But I did get the um, Chai Gu, Tunisian crochet set. Okay, is that focusing? There we go. So it's a wooden hook set and you get these long cords and stoppers. And again, I'll show more of it in a little bit, but I am really picky about crochet hooks. And so it took me a long time to like even want to try Tunisian crochet because I just didn't see um, the type of crochet hook that I like. So I will talk more about that in a minute, but I'm Tunisian crocheting. So Tunisian crochet is different than standard crochet in that 
For most projects, you'll need either a longer hook or a corded hook, not all of them. Sometimes you can use just a regular crochet hook, but instead of like completing each stitch as you go, you do a forward pass where you pick up a bunch of loops and then you do a return pass where you close all the loops. So instead of like new loop and close, new loop and close, you pull up all the loops and then you close all the loops. That is oversimplifying things, but again, Tony Lipsy, she's got so many tutorials that are free on her channel and then she's got them um, with her pattern, at least this pattern as well. Let's talk yarn. <laughs> so this yarn is from Wanderluck Fibers. I got this yarn at McKinney Knittery, uh, I think. Oh wait, is this the yarn I got at McKinney? Okay, if I'm remembering correctly, I got this at McKinney Knittery in Texas um, earlier last year. They were having a trunk show. I think that's where I got this yarn. <laughs> but anyway, Wanderlug Fibers and this color is called Confetti, which is kind of funny because I think there was a yarn that I was calling Confetti that I didn't have a label for. That's kind of funny, but this one's actually called Confetti <laughs> because the dyer named it. And here is what it looks like. My yarn cozy kind of matches it. It's not quite as fun in the colors, but I think this is gonna turn out so pretty. So I started this project and then only worked on it for like an hour and put it away. It's gonna go away again for a little bit longer until I can finish something else because this takes a lot of concentration. I've done the hardest part and now I just have like repeat rows as I make the shawl bigger and bigger, but because it's so new for me, I need to really focus on it. So this is gonna kind of hang out in the bottom of my uh, whip basket for a little bit longer and then I'll bring it back out. I have one more new project. Like I said, I have too many whips going right now. I really wanna finish something, not the sweater, that's too much. Maybe the hat or maybe this between now and the next podcast. So I always have to show this bag. This is from Black Pearl Magic. It's a vinyl bag with stars on it and a, um, what's this called? The rainbow zipper? I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say, but I love it. So I am making a float tote, which is one of my own patterns that it's actually my very first pattern that I ever released. And the float tote that I'm making, I actually have a project in right now. I am making this size float tote, which is the three skein float tote. So in here, um, actually it's a little bit messy here. The float tote, it was designed for color work projects, hence floats, like knitting floats. And so it has little baskets in it to hold your different yarns which for me right now, when I was doing the three colors, that was great. Now that I'm doing just two, um, two balls of yarn, it's nice to have those in there. And then my other ones are just like resting here in this tote, but I love it because I can just throw the project here um, on top and flip up the handles. Anyway, I, I love this. Um, I use these bags all the time, like genuinely because I like them. And I like them because I, feel like I designed them for this specific purpose and they serve that purpose for me and that's why they're my, my favorite bags. But I want some more of them. Also in the membership this month, we are crocheting and we're making the float tote. And so I wanted to make one along with all of my members. And then I thought, well, while I'm making this, I've actually been wanting to make a few updates to the pattern so I can work through those and then um, retest and re-release this pattern. So I think that is coming down the line, <laughs> but let me just show you what I've done so far and kind of share the um, thing, the changes that I'm planning to make. So I am using Sugar and Cream, which is the suggested yarn for this tote. There's just Sugar and Cream or Peaches and Cream cotton. There's just not really any other yarns that make the same like you can see, can you just tell like it's stiff? You want stiff for this. Stiff and it's really durable. Um, my totes are a little dirty because I've lo loved them a lot, um, but they do withstand, um, you know, a lot of use, which is great. So I've got two colors here, but of course both of these are the same. So I guess I didn't save the other one, but I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton. I just got mine at Joann's. And the color that I'm using for the bottom is Orchid. 
So I almost got a pink. There was a pink called like, oh, I can't remember. There was a pink and I almost got that, but then I saw this and I'm like, okay, I don't have any purple float totes. So I think I want to do that. So here I'm working on the bottom of the float tote. Um, hold on one second. Sorry about that. I heard a noise, so I wanted to go close the door. <laughs> so I'm working on the bottom of the float tote here. I'm getting really close to having all my stitches and then I'll start moving up, making the body of the tote. And then the other color that I have is very similar to the finished tote that I showed, which is the Acru color from Sugar and Cream. So I've got a, quite a few more of those because they are part of the inner workings of the float tote and the majority of the top. So I think this is gonna be so pretty and so cute. I'm really excited to get to work on it. It's really fast, but I will say it's hard on your hands. So I try to only do this for an hour, maybe less per day because of how stiff the fabric is. I don't wanna hurt myself by doing too much. So some of the things I wanna work on for this, this pattern, again, this was my very first pattern that I ever released and the pattern is still good. Everything is still written correctly and it works out great, but I wanna make a few updates and additions to it. So one of the things that I want to change, let me find it, is experiment with eliminating the join. So if you can see, it's not super visible, but right here, is the slip stitch, slip stitch join of the float tote. And for some people it's more obvious, in some colors it's more obvious, and there's a way to get rid of that, which is just to crochet around in a spiral. So for the future of the float tote, I am planning to eliminate that and have just a seamless body for the float tote. The other thing that I'm experimenting with, and this is all like, this may be in the pattern, this may not, because I've got to work it out, I am experimenting with changing the cups. So the original float tote has a little notch in the cup and that's so you can use, um, you can use cakes or you can use balls and they will kind of roll forward like that. It gives a little space for that yarn to come through. But it's kind of like a pain to do those little notches because you have to turn back and forth. So I'm, exper I'm experimenting with just a closed um, cup. But then I thought, why stop there? And let's make some different sizes and ways to access it. Oh my gosh, do we now have an ambulance coming? <sighs> Really rude of them to interrupt our podcast, huh? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so I'm experimenting with some different sizes here. So this one's just like a plain one. And then I was like, well, I can create some different shapes. Like what if I have a ball of yarn and not a cake? So this one, you can just probably barely tell the difference on camera, but it's actually a little bit wider and looser. And it should, I'm gonna test this with actually this pattern, but it should be better for when you have um, a ball of yarn as opposed to a cake so that it rolls really easy. It does not do that in the other one. Like in this one, it's a little too tight because it's made for cakes. So it doesn't quite work as well, it doesn't roll. And then I thought, well, why stop there? And I am starting to <laughs> make up little tiny ones. This one is going to be for a 50 gram cake. So you can see the size difference there. And so I'm just playing with things. I'm just experimenting with different sizes and different cups and making, you know, the appearance of the tote look a little smoother, the experience of making it a little bit easier and just kind of playing with things. So all that being said, I will probably have this pattern in testing next. It might be several weeks from now. It might be a month from now. I don't know right now because there's not really any rush on it, but this will probably be my next pattern that goes through some testing and releasing, and I'm really excited about that. So if you're already a float tote pattern holder, you'll get all these updates. But if you're like, wait, I would love to make the float tote, more is coming. I'm really, really excited about it. Okay, that is finally the end to all my projects 
So let's go on to the next segment. We're doing a special one-time segment just called acquisitions because I received quite a bit of stuff in the mail this week. Some of it that I purchased, uh, yeah, most of it that I purchased and some of it that was sent to me and I just wanna show it and share it with you because I put a lot of time and thought into the things that I purchase. I'm trying to, you know, get rid of all of my stash. So yarn coming in is very, very limited. Um, but I don't always show the most restraint with other items, especially smaller things like stitch markers. <laughs> and I got a whole new crochet hook set um, in the past couple weeks. So I wanna share all of that with you. So the first thing is I bought my first Tunisian crochet hook set. This is the one from Chai Gu. I bought it off of Amazon and I'll have the link down below. I also have the, the link in my Amazon storefront. There's a section called crochet and it's in there. So when I'm doing just standard crochet, I prefer to use the Clover Amour hooks, but for Tunisian crochet, I was really hesitant to even start. All I saw were wooden and metal, like aluminum hooks that just didn't look very comfortable. I really like an ergonomic handle and with Tunisian crochet, because of the way that you Tunisian crochet, you can't have an ergonomic handle. Everything needs to be the same size. And I was pretty worried about using a wooden hook because I've used some wooden hooks before that were tapered. I think I like, I can never remember. There's a certain type of crochet hook head that I like, and it's like the Clovers, like the Boy, um, not like the Susan Bates. And all of the Tunisian crochet hook sets I saw looked like the type of crochet hook head that I didn't like. So when my <laughs> membership decided that in addition to the float tote, we were going to Tunisian crochet this month, I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> it's time to step out of my comfort zone and finally try some Tunisian crochet. And I, so I went to the expert, Tony Lipsy, and I went to her YouTube channel and I watched tons of video reviews on Tunisian crochet hooks. Um, she had, you know what, by tons, I'm exaggerating because I think I watched two or three, <laughs> but I watched everything that she had and it was super helpful. And I landed on this Tunisian crochet hook set. The reason being is that it is called a hybrid, I think that's the right word. And crocheters, you can correct me because I, I'm definitely not an expert crocheter, but this is kind of like a hybrid, I believe, between the inline and the tapered. Um, all I know is that while it's not exactly like the clover hook head that I like or the boy one, it is not so, um, to, like the Susan Bates to me right here, it's like, it's so shallow, I can't even grab my stitches. So it's somewhere in between those and I can use this. I also really liked, you know, the warmth of the wood and this is like a nicer, smoother wood. And then I knew I would like the Chai Gu cords. The one thing Tony recommended is that this is not the actual cord that comes with the set. I ordered an additional cord from Chai Gu, again on Amazon, that was their, um, spin or twist or no twist is not twist spin i think it's called spin but anyway the actual cord um swivels so it allows the hook to swivel around independent from the cord which i really wish i had on my knitting needles <laughs> that would make magic loop so much easier and i know i could do that but i have the fixed sets that don't do that so anyway I did a ton of research and landed on this. This is definitely an investment. Um, but for me, I kind of, I weigh things like, okay, I could get a Tunisian hook set that is cost less that I'm not so sure that I will like. And then ultimately one day, if I like Tunisian crochet, I'll just probably buy the one I was originally looking at that's more expensive and then I will have kind of wasted some money and materials and stuff like that. So why don't I just go ahead and get the set that I think is going to be the best for me. And not all decisions can be made that way, but at least for the knitting tools, like I knew um, it would be better for me to wait and invest in the best thing that I could afford rather than to grab something a little bit lower quality and a little more affordable. So 
This set comes with, how many is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, I think, because I've got one out. Eleven hooks. The smallest size is 3.5 millimeters, which is an E, and the largest one is 10 millimeters, which is an N, and it all comes in this little set. And then it comes with some cords and a gauge thing, but the cords are the red cords, which are my favorite for knitting. I love these. But what Tony said about these is that they're not going to spin. And so I thought that might be better. Um, so yeah, I ordered this one. And that's what this little clear cord is. It's called the spin, which honestly is very nice because again, it spins independently of the cord, which I think will be really great. And then also this was in the set are these stoppers. I don't know why they send you sharp T-pins to tighten things. <laughs> like this, these T-pins are what I use for blocking, not for tightening my knitting needle. That seems a little dangerous, but you know what? That's, that's fine. Try to, <laughs> that's a questionable addition, but that's fine. Um, I really, really like it so far. Have I done a lot of Tunisian crochet? No, but now I know that if I want to move forward doing more Tunisian crochet, I have exactly what I need. So I took so much time trying to think through that and figure that out. And I'm really happy with what I got. Okay, the other thing, not the one other thing, I've gotten several things. One thing that I got as a surprise, I'm trying to scoop these into my hands, as a surprise in the mail were these little stitch markers. Actually, oops, <laughs> almost knocked over my uh, water there. Um, I don't need all of them in my hand to show you, do I? My friend Rebecca, <laughs> really struggling with this. My friend Rebecca sent me these adorable little stitch markers. Come on, there we go. That are Mickey and she 3D or cut them or something, 3D printed them or cut them or I don't know how she did it, but they're split ring markers. And they're so cute. So now that I'm doing a lot more crochet, I think these are gonna be really useful because I don't have split ring markers. So I'm gonna try these here on my float tote soon. So the timing couldn't have been better. And I just thought these were really cute. She doesn't sell them or maybe she is going to, um, but I just thought that was like the sweetest, most special little gift. And I wanted to share that. Okay. I ordered a custom stitch marker from The Littlest Charm Co. Um, the shop owner's name is Kelsey and she is very responsive, very sweet, um, very, very um, communi communicative, which is amazing. She is like above and beyond. Um, so she has these custom cupcake pet markers where you can get your dog or cat, I think it was dog and cat, as a custom cupcake marker. So of course I had to get a toaster marker and it turned out perfect. We went back and forth. I sent her a picture and we kind of chatted about different things. And this is what we came up with. And I think it is the sweetest thing ever. So let's get that guy in focus there. Can't tell if it's in focus or not struggling today. There we go. So this is the toaster stitch marker. Isn't he so cute? He's got the little white chest and a blue collar like he's wearing. And then we decided to add a love and stitches pink little heart charm to him. But it turned out so cute. I mean, look at him. Don't you think? Looks just like him. <laughs> These are so adorable. Um, hello, come back. There we go. So I made sure to order a couple extra of these and I'm going to hang on to them and use them for something special in a giveaway because I just knew that these were too cute and I wanted to share. I know that y'all love toaster probably as much as I do. And so I just thought it was so cute. And then I thought, well, Maybe Kelsey of Lilith's Charm Co. would be okay to make some more of these 
in case anybody wanted to buy one. And so she said she would. So I will include her shop link down below. It looks like right now she is on a break getting caught up with all the orders. But once her shop opens up again, check it out. And I will let you know, I'll keep you posted on Instagram um, when the toaster charms come up for sale. They are like, they're a little bigger, but they're lightweight because they're polymer clay. So that is going into a project immediately. <laughs> I was so excited to um, to see her, what like her creativity with that. It's super, super cute. Okay, what else do we have? Two more things. I, actually I need to take this out of the package. I received my outstanding shawl kit from Yarnia. Let's get this out of here so we can properly look at it. So Yarnia has the Outstanding Shawl Kits. We are doing our Spring Shawl Cal starting April 4th, which is two weeks away from the date I'm recording this. So less than two weeks when you're watching. Hello? <laughs> More horns. So this is the Signature Color Kit. So this is the main color. It's a Madeline Tosh colorway, um, Tosh sock, and the color is called Modern Fair Isle. And then these two colors are meant to represent both myself and Yarnia. So of course this one is me, <laughs> this pink color. And then this one is Yarnia, the orange color. And I think they're gonna be so much fun together. So these are 50 gram skeins and then a 100 gram skein. They are splitting these off um, for you so you have just the right amount of yarn. And I think this is gonna be so pretty together. They do have other kits in different colors if these are not your colors and Yarnia ships anywhere within the US. So make sure to go onto their site and you can support a local yarn store from you know, a distance or go into your own local yarn store and find something or go into stash. You can use anything you want for this um, make along as long as you're knitting the Outstanding Shawl, which is by Chrissy Archer. I'm going to talk more about the actual knit along here coming up soon, but I was so excited to get my yarn. So, so cute. What are these colors? This tag says grapefruit and oh geranium. So I'm guessing that this one's geranium and this one is grapefruit. So cute. I'm so excited to start on that. It's going to be so much fun. Last thing, um, Yarnia knew. Uh, Kathleen at Yarnia, we've been talking a lot, like planning this knit along and everything. And she knew that I needed some of the uh, barber cords, the try on cords, which is great because I, as I showed earlier, am knitting that prismatic sweater and I need to try it on. And I have always like put extra cords on, like taking the needle tips off, put extra cords on, and there is an easier way. And that is with these. Um, this company calls them pearl strings, but you may have also heard them call try on cords or barber cords. I don't know if barber cords is like a one specific maker or not. So I may be wrong. <gasps> these are so pink. I love these ones. So they sent these to me, which was such a nice surprise. So basically, I don't want to mess this up too much. This is a plastic tube. I don't think it's going to show up on camera, but it's hollow. And you take your knitting needle, let's see if I can pick this back up. Too many things in my lap. Okay, so, and I probably will show this on Instagram, like trying this on and everything. But you take the cord, I think there's two in here. Well, you know what? Oh, here we go. So here's a cord, it's really nice and long. So this plus your needles should be long enough to try on a sweater you take the tubing and you put it, attach it to your needle tip like that. And I would do it like much more secure, but then you're able to slide your stitches onto the cord. So slide onto the cord. Um, they don't have to come completely off the needles, but I'll probably attach this on both ends, let it slide onto the cord. And then I'm able to try on my sweater. And then when I'm done, I can just from the cord, slide my stitches all back to the needle and then detach it, super easy. So much faster than putting it on a string, so much faster than um, attaching new 
cords and transferring to other needles, which is what I've done in the past. And I'm, I have used um, try it on tubing in the past and it was way too stiff. It was really hard to get on. Um, it popped off my needles. This feels different. Like this is much more flexible. It's actually a little stretchy. Has It's much more flexible. I think this is gonna be great. So I will try this and let you know, but I've heard so many good things from people. So I know it's gonna be great. So there you go, all of my acquisitions, <laughs> some stitch markers, some yarn, some tubing, some needles, some hooks, I guess, not needles. <laughs> but yeah, I got a lot of stuff in the mail this past week. Um, but I feel pretty good about, you know, not adding to the stash too much because while those skeins will sit in stash for a few weeks, I do have plans of casting them on on April 4th when the make along begins. All right, let's move on to some news. We've got two big things coming up on April 4th, which is less than two weeks away. So the first thing is the Yarnia plus Love and Stitches Spring Shawl Knit Along. So we had collected um, submissions from a bunch of newer designers that had fewer projects on Ravelry, uh, fewer than 25 projects on Ravelry uh, for their patterns. And we wanted to find some, you know, lesser known designers and spotlight them. And we collected a bunch of patterns. We still have um, some that we're going to share with y'all after we get started, but we ultimately um, narrowed it down to a handful of patterns and then put it on Instagram and had all of you vote for the final pattern that we would use for the spring shawl knit along. And that is the Outstanding Shawl by Christy Archer. And I just showed the kit that I'm gonna be using. There are several kits on Yarnia's website. I'll have all that info down below. Last podcast, I shared some teasers of what's coming up and said, oh, it'll be on my website. <laughs> and I hadn't gotten it on my website yet, but as you're watching this, I should have all the official information on a one pager. So there is so much coming up with this make along. On April 4th, which is a Monday, we're gonna have a virtual cast on party that I'm hosting on YouTube. So I'll go to the Nitty Natty YouTube channel at noon Eastern time on April 4th and we can cast on together. I will probably have mine already cast on but we can chat about it. Um, we will cast on together. And then that evening um, at the Yarnia shop, which is in Montclair, New Jersey, there is an in-person cast on party. It is limited to, um, I believe 16 people. And that information is on Yarnia's website. I will link to it on nittynatty.com, but you'll have to go there in order to register. And of course, this is for people that are gonna be there in person, so local to the area. Um, I'm gonna be there. I'm really excited. It's gonna be so much fun to get to work on their, these shawls together. Um, I, I think it's going to be so much fun. I've been craving that in-person make-along um, interactions. It's been so long since we've been able to do it, so it should be really, really great. Um, other things we're going to do, I am going to be hosting virtual um, classes workshops, knit along together. So basically there is going to be an option if you are interested in doing a, uh, I, think, I think I'm gonna call them workshops. I haven't fully decided yet, but basically you'll be able to sign up with me and um, that it'll be limited to 15 total people in the group. And we will meet four times throughout the eight weeks of the make-along. This is a two month make-along. We'll meet up four times every other week and we will work on our shawl together. So I'm gonna be demonstrating techniques in the shawl. So it'll be really great if any of the techniques in the pattern are new to you. You'll be able to get lessons on that. I'll be able to answer questions during our workshops, but we'll also be able to just hang out and chat. It'll be like a knit night. Um, we'll just get to hang out work on our, our shawls together. I'll answer questions as needed. Um, and then there will be that accountability factor. So I know a lot of you may already know how to do a lot of the techniques in the shawl, but there's something fun about like knowing, hey, I'm meeting up with my group like every other week on Tuesday. I need to make sure I get to this point in the shawl and then this point, cause I'll have little, I'll have it spaced out for you. So you'll kind of have like 
homework <laughs> to do before the next time we meet up and it's just going to be really fun. So these are going to be really small groups. They are virtual only on Zoom and I have two daytime options and two evening options, 15 spots in each one and all of that information will be linked down below and the signups will be opening very soon. So look for that information. Um, so some of the other things that we're offering throughout the make along that do not require um, signing up, we're going to have a an interview with the designer Christy Archer, that's going to be somewhere midway along in the make along, it might already be on the page down below. Um, Yarnia is hosting some um, in person just like meetups. And so you'll be able to sign up on their site because again, it's in person. So it is limited to how many people they can take. Um, and then at the end of the make along, we're going to do kind of like a, a show and tell <laughs> of our finished shawls and give away the prizes live um, on YouTube and like kind of like Zoom, Zoom and YouTube. We did this for the fall garment make along. If you were there, um, I had a few people come on with me to Zoom and then we broadcast it to YouTube and they got to show their finished garments. Like on YouTube, they got to hold them up. So we're gonna do the same um, with the shawl. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. So all the details on the events, um, on the classes, the workshops to sign up for, um, all of that will be on nittynatty.com if you go to make alongs and then um, the spring shawl cow. I'll have it linked down below in this video and throughout the rest of the two months of the make along, it will all be on there. So the spring shawl cow starts April 4th and it runs through almost the end of May. I can't think of the exact date off the top of my head, but we're ending on Thursday before, <clears throat> excuse me, before Memorial Day. Is that, is that the spring holiday? Yeah, we're ending just before Memorial Day because we know that a lot of us like to have, um, a Memorial Day cast on. <laughs> so we want to get the shawls wrapped up before then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So that's one of the big things coming on April 4th. <laughs> Just one of them. Um, the other thing that's happening is the Love & Stitches membership is reopening for quarter two on April 4th. So if you are interested, I would highly suggest signing up with the link down below to get the um, uh, they're kind of like, uh, like emails, um, where I'm kind of sharing more info that I'm going to share on the website itself. Like I'll give you little tidbits and things that we've done this quarter and send you a little, um, sneak peek into some of the interviews that we got to do. So make sure to sign up on the email list. It's just a waiting list. It's not, you're not signing up or committing to um, join the membership yet. It's just if you want to find out more info. Then on April 4th, the membership, it will officially open and it will be open through that Friday. I think, um, let me look at the dates here. I know April 4th is a Monday. Let's see what that Friday is. <laughs> Eighth. So it will be open from Monday, April 4th through Friday, April 8th at a certain time. There will be a cutoff because we usually have an opening event um, for all of our new members to welcome everybody. So yes, make sure you sign up on the waiting list so that you can get more information. And then of course, I'll be sharing the um, sign up page that will have like all, all of the info, what's included and everything um, down below. I'm super excited. And if you are signed up on that email list, you will start getting those teasers very, very soon. You'll get more of them next week because it's the week before the membership is going to open. Then the last thing is that the Playtime Cowl is now live. So this is my um, a crochet pattern. So just hit my knee on here. And I did show one earlier because I just finished one right here. I'm gonna have tons to show. So this is a single skein fingering weight um, crochet pattern. And it's such a fun stitch. I know it's really hard to see on camera, but it's a crisscross stitch. And it looks so good, I think, in a multicolor, but it also looks so beautiful in a solid color. So this was a collaboration with um, Shauna of Raven Moon Dye Works. She's got a really nice base here that's 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon. I just love it. She sells on her website and also if you're in the Nashville or Brentwood area in Tennessee, she sells at Bliss Yarns. But this is the single skein 
version. This was a different um, dyer. You can tell, I think you can tell on camera, but like her Shauna's base, that 8515 is just, there's something different about it. It's fluffier. It just makes such a nice, nice cowl. This one was a four ply 7525, which still looks good, but it doesn't have like the, the oomph to it. I mean, I still, I still love both, but just in case you're like debating in your stash, if you've got like an 80, 85, 15 or an 80, 20, that will look really even extra spectacular, I think at this gauge. So that was a single skein. And then there's the double skein, not double skein, double loop. They both take one skein. I love having a one skein pattern, especially one that uses up most of the yarn. So like this one uses between like 90 and 95 grams. So you're really gonna wanna do a gauge swatch and make sure. So I've got this one and then all of my, <laughs> I have all of my like sample versions that I worked up before I knew exactly how it was gonna go. Those are just my swatches. But yeah, I've got so many of them. It's such a quick and fun pattern. Oh, and then the other thing that I did, um, this pattern right now is just on Ravelry. I have not put it on Etsy yet, um, but just let me know. Send me an email if you are not a Ravelry user. Um, but I decided that the Playtime Shawl, which is the sister pattern, it uses a similar, it uses the same stitch pattern and then it's Got some, it's, it's, there's some things that are different about it. Like it has a bobble border. It's obviously a shawl, not a cowl, um, but the playtime shawl and playtime cowl, if you buy them together in a bundle, you save 50% on one of the patterns. So normally each pattern is $6 if you purchase them individually, but if you get them in the bundle, it's $9. So you're saving 50% on one of the patterns. So if you like both, if you're a crocheter that loves to use like special skeins of fingering weight yarn. This cowl is perfect. And then the shawl takes two skeins of yarn. So it's another great one to show off some special skeins of yarn. All right, I think that's all of my news. <laughs> Lots of news for this segment. So let's move on to life. This past week has been pretty crazy because I was out of town until Saturday. It is now Monday and I was out of town for a full week. It was definitely more chaotic leading up to that because we had just been to Florida. We were home for like, I don't even know if it was a full week. And then I went out of town again. Can't stay here, but chaotic. <laughs> so what was I doing <laughs> over the last week? And this is also why we didn't have a podcast last week. So my mom lives in Tennessee. My parents live in Tennessee and my mom wanted me to come and help her with some decluttering around the house. All of our, all of my siblings, we've essentially moved out now. Um, my grandmother passed away a few years ago. And so now my parents have like all this stuff, like kids stuff and furniture for my grandmother's house and just so many things. And my mom wanted some help just to like make decisions on things and get rid of stuff and physically take the stuff to Goodwill or sell it or whatever. And, I, and so she was like, who do I call? Me. <laughs> so I was more than happy to go down there. So this ended up being like a semi working week, semi vacation, because we did do a lot of hanging out and then also, we worked on the things that my mom needed to do. Um, so it was really, really great. And then what before I had even booked my ticket, because I was booking it very last minute to fly out there, um, my great uncle passed away. And so my mom really wanted to go as her uncle. So she really wanted to go to his memorial service and his burial and um, see family. And so we changed plans and I ended up, instead of flying straight to Tennessee, I flew to Charlotte, North Carolina to meet my mom and we drove to Greensboro, North Carolina and um, went to the memorial service and got to see all of that side, my mom's dad's side of the family. I met so many people, <laughs> like third cousins, second cousins once removed, whatever. I can't keep it all straight. I met so many people. And so that was really, um, you know, while it was like a sad time, it was really nice to get to see family that I hadn't seen in a long time. So we did that. And then I have my aunt and uncle that live in Charlotte and cousins. 
my mom's brother. So we got to see them, which was really fun because they are, my cousins are a lot younger than me. They were flower girls in my wedding and I haven't seen them since then, which means I haven't seen them in almost four and a half years. And so I got to see them, which was also really great. And then my mom and I got in her car and we drove to Augusta, Georgia. And if you don't know where Augusta is, it's where the masters are played, <laughs> but that's where my mom grew up. And so we went to Augusta, Georgia. That's where my great uncle, we, there was another service for him there. So we went to that and we got to stay with one of my mom's high school best friends and meet her family. And it was just like, it was a really good time. I got to eat so many um, like Southern foods. I got to have my mashed potatoes, gravy and green beans and fried okra and squash casserole. And I just had the best time like visiting and eating. I got to knit a lot cause my mom drove the whole time. So we spent the entire weekend traveling around North, South Carolina, Georgia. And then we finally came back into Tennessee. <laughs> and then I spent about four, I think it was four full days in Tennessee at my parents' house. I have a, one of my brothers lives there, got to see him, um, worked, uh, helped my mom clear stuff out. And what was really fun is that I thought all of my stuff was pretty much gone from my parents' house. I haven't lived there in, I haven't lived there full time in 12 years. So I thought all of my stuff was gone. Well, turns out it wasn't. Um, we found actually several things that I had knitted while I was in high school. So I do have some pictures of the different things we found. I didn't keep any of it, it all went to Goodwill, but I found like a rug, a brown rug that I had cut up brown t-shirts and knitted it like log cabin style into a bath mat. <laughs> I found a sugar and cream cotton, it's like pink, or not pink, um, yellow, blue, and green circular rug that I remember making for my brother and I shared a bathroom. I made it for the bathroom and I was so proud of it. And I was like, this is great because it's super washable. But now I kind of think about like the bath mat on the floor. There was a there was a period of time in knitting and crochet where like making bath mats and stuff was really popular or maybe it was just me. <laughs> um, but I was really, really proud of that because I remember I learned how to um, attach a border around in a circle as I knit and I was so proud of that and then the other thing I found was these like bath mitts that I had made they look like fish they have like a little crocheted eye um and a little uh like hook like a little loop to hook them onto the shower hook and I used them in high school I remember using them so it's just so funny to see these projects that I completely forgot I had even made obviously haven't used them in years and yet they were still there in my mom's house but it was for me it was not difficult to say oh my gosh I remember these I love these and let them go they don't serve any purpose in my life anymore they're not things that I need or use they're not colors that I like I have moved on from them and um, I've realized that I don't need to keep them as like trophies <laughs> to my knitting um that is to say, if you like to keep stuff like that, like no, no shame at all. Um, that's just, you know, that's just for me, like something that I don't feel any, any attachment to holding on to. I have some pictures of them and I'm good. <laughs> like I don't need, I don't need those anymore, but it was really fun to see that stuff. So that's most of what went on in the last week. Um, then I got back here into New York early Saturday morning. I took two super, super early flights at 6 a.m. Both of them were like 6 a.m., 6, 20 a.m. Rough. Um, and got into New York in time to meet up with Kent and he has had friends visiting from Texas actually. And we all went to a Dallas Stars hockey game out on Long Island, which was really fun. Um, I think I have a picture of this too. I was knitting during the game. We had the best seats I've ever, ever had. Um, at a hockey game, I was five or six rows back right behind the goal where the star shot twice. It was so cool. I um, told my dad, cause he's watching his hockey. I was like, look for me on TV knitting. <laughs> I hope I get to be on TV knitting. But what actually happened, well, actually I don't know if I got, was on TV. Like I don't, I don't know if like that camera angle captures that. But as soon as the Islanders scored the first time, I had just taken like a giant bite of a hot dog. I was like, oh great, that's what's gonna be on TV. Not me knitting and showing the world that you can knit at hockey games, 
but me eating a hot dog. <laughs> so I have no idea if I was on the TV or not, but I did have fun knitting. I was working on my everyday slouchy beanie because it's nice and warm and fuzzy at the game, which was great. Um, if you do like to knit at hockey games or outside when it's kind of cold, I would suggest using wooden needles because metal needles get really cold and make it hard to knit when the temperature outside or inside is chilly. So I did, I usually knit on socks at hockey games with metal needles. I found a huge difference working on my hat with wooden needles. It was so much more comfortable. So I'm gonna do that from now on. We had the friends in town all weekend. They actually just left this morning. So we did lots of going out to eat, hanging out with them, knitting. It was really fun. We had a blast um, over the last week and weekend. So I'm like ready to get back to work today and get back to kind of the grind of things. I'm also really, um, feeling this weather that it's sunny and getting warmer and I'm excited for spring and summer to come. So as far as things that I've been watching, I did made some major moves in TV last week. I finished Joe Millionaire, which is a reality show about these girls dating like two guys. Finished that. Finished The Bachelor, which by the way, whoa, that was a lot. Um, I also finished Love is Blind on Netflix. That was also a lot, probably more than The Bachelor. Um, yeah, I finished all of those within like 24 hours of each other. So <laughs> I was kind of like, man, this is a lot of reality TV. Maybe it's time for me to take a break. I love it, it's so fun. Um, I also finished the book that I was reading for so long, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. It was so good. And what was hilarious is I forgot, I always read on my Kindle and I forgot I had downloaded the Bridgerton books as a trilogy. So while the percentage, like percentage of the book read was going up, it wasn't going up very fast. And so I thought I was only 30% of the way done in the book, but I was actually 30% of the way done with the three books, meaning I was almost done with the first book, like as I was reading that one. And so I was like, no wonder I felt like I was reading so slow. I wasn't, I was just, I'm reading a trilogy instead of a single book and it's all in there together. So now I've moved on to the fifth book, which is called um, Still Bridgerton. It's uh, To Sir Philip With Love, and it is Eloise's story. And I wanna say that the second season of Bridgerton comes out this week. I've been also watching through the first season of Bridgerton, but not in any real rush. Um, I just kind of wanted to like refresh my memory on what happened, but all of the stories, at least in the books are pretty, separated, so I'll be interested to see how they do it on the series. Um, I have not watched any spoilers or trailers, so it's gonna be kind of new for me. The last thing that we watched over the weekend was a new Netflix movie called The Adam Project. It has um, Ryan Reynolds, Jennifer, Jennifer Garner, um, Zoe Saldana, and Mark Ruffalo, like a huge cast. Um, and it was pretty good. It wasn't like the greatest movie ever. I can see why it just went to Netflix, but it was pretty cute. I liked it. And I love Ryan Reynolds from Just Friends to Deadpool. Like he is the funniest. <laughs> he is such a funny person. And he always makes that same like face and everything. And he kind of goes like this and he's like, <laughs> I don't know. He's so funny. So I, I enjoyed it. I laughed a lot in the movie. Um, so yeah. That's what's been going on here in the past few weeks. All right, let's wrap this thing up with some weekly wins. So I kind of have like a, a mishmash of weekly wins, but I am really proud of myself for the whole past week of like traveling and working and coming back into work. Um, this is just something that if this is your first podcast and you're like, what is she talking about? I, I like to share my um, weekly wins every podcast, which is just um, kind of identifying for myself things that I am proud of that I've done the past week. Because I found that I'm always like kind of beating myself up like I should do more, I should do better. And realizing that this comes from a place of wanting to be like perfect and having a perfectionism issue. And I've been working on this a lot. Um, I guess I want to say that um, Sam Laura Brown, who is the uh, my coach and the um, 
would you say author of a podcast? She hosts the podcast Perfectionism Project. She would not say that perfectionism is an issue. She would say that you have your perfectionism handbrake on. <laughs> so you're trying to go forward and you are going forward, but you have this handbrake on that's making things 10 times more difficult than they need to be. And that's how I felt for so long. And so I am, um, every week I kind of identify something. It, sometimes it's knitting things, sometimes it's business, a lot of times it is, that I am proud of myself for, and I want you to do the same. So anyway, I'm backtracking. I've been working on working better and like having more balance and having like, just not being all consumed and in the grind all of the time. I've done that a lot. And I went on a vacation a few weeks ago to Florida and I did work some while I was there and it was better than it has been in the past, but it was still difficult. Like while we were at Disney World, I was still in my mind going, I should be doing something right now. Like I should be being productive. I should be working. I should have done more. And it's like this constant in my, in my mind, even if it's not true, <laughs> even if I've done a lot, even if I checked all the boxes, it's just something that I'm working on. And so this vacation, I wanted to do things differently. I still didn't get everything done. I wanted to before I left, not even close, but somehow I've been working on my muscles here and I was able to go, okay, what do I actually need to get done? I identified it and I was like, great. And then I was able to say, I'm gonna get these things done on, this was on like a Friday before I was leaving. I was like, I can do these things on Tuesday. When I get back to Tennessee, cause remember we went from North Carolina to Georgia, whatever, all around before we actually were at my parents' house in Tennessee. So I was like, I can do these things on Tuesday and still have them done in plenty of time for when they need to be out there, whatever I was working on. So I don't need to beat myself up about this because I've decided that I will do it at X time. And it actually worked. <laughs> In the past, I haven't been able to do this because like, I just constantly feel like I need to be working. I need to be doing something. I need to be doing something productive. And I was like, nope, I am not worrying about this until Tuesday. I'm going to do it on Tuesday. I know I am because I can trust myself now to do it and not procrastinate on it. <laughs> it was just like a really amazing feeling. So that felt really good. I feel um, great about publishing a pattern, even in the midst of going out of town. This whole trip, I wasn't super prepared for. And so just getting things done that I did while I was gone, I feel really, really good about that I was still able to do that. And then today has been like the smoothest day re-entering into reality. I still didn't really want to wake up this morning. I mean, hello, I never want to wake up on a Monday. It's hard, right? But there wasn't that sense of like, ah, I'm already behind. I woke up today and I was like, I'm excited to get the, some things done for my sock course, to record a podcast, to get a video ready for publishing tomorrow on YouTube. And I'm excited about it and I'm ready for it. And I'm not terrified about how behind I am because I'm still feeling a little behind, but there's just this inner peace that comes with planning properly. That's just so amazing. And I've been learning so much. So cannot recommend more highly the perfectionism project. And then I did a vlog um, over a month ago. What was that vlog called? I, I'll try to remember to link it. Um, but I did a vlog where I kind of went through like a normal day of knitting and working and what I was working on. And I shared a lot about the perfectionism project and power planning in there. So if this sounds like I can relate to that, then you may be interested in that. And if you're like, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't have a hard time getting things done. That's great. That's really, really awesome. Like, I mean that genuinely, like there is something so hard about um, having this perfectionism handbrake on that you're like, I know this could be easier. Why am I making this so difficult? And that's what the perfectionism um, project is all about is releasing that handbrake. It's so cool. All right. I have talked about that for way too long. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching um, today's episode. I'm happy to be back into the routine again. Things should be normal moving on to this next week. I'll have Tuesday video and podcasts and all of that. And in the future, if I have something coming up, I will try to give you like 
lots of warning like, hey, this is not coming or it is coming, etc. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.